Hello, welcome to the L1 News. Today is July 27th, and today we're doing government and social news. But first we have a word from our sponsor. Linode! Thanks, Linode! Linode has been doing some really awesome things. Linode is Linux hosting, but so much more. Block object storage. It can be your one-stop shop for, you know, Amazon replacement type stuff. I mean, not really Amazon replacement, but kind of, yeah, Amazon replacement. You should try it out because you might be surprised how much you can get for your money. There's a $100 coupon below. You can deploy your own Kubernetes instance. You can set up your own block object storage. You can set up your own WireGuard VPN endpoint. Yeah, you can roll your own VPN, which is pretty cool when you only want to protect your traffic from your ISP and not have like a random rotating public IP address or anything like that. A lot of fun stuff. You can host your own caliber book server, your own file share thing, your own G drive replacement. There's a lot of options. Linode has a lot of really good tutorials. There's even a one click Minecraft install, which is where our community Minecraft server is. So thanks Linode for sponsoring the news. And I've also got some orange soda. Oh, and the chat is like, it's very 50, 50 divide right now in the chat about the orange soda reviews at this point. I've selected the V8 plus energy to try first because technically the, uh, you know, the whole fat Fanta, yeah, well, you know, fat. Uh, whole fat. V8. Now that's not the vegetable one, right? It is. It's oh, it orange is. Orange and pineapple. So what vegetables are in there with the oranges and pineapples? Uh, the caffeine fruit. I don't know. It just says caffeine level six. But what? Is there any tomato juice in that? Uh, not all V8 has tomato juice. Not a significant source of no ingredients. Water, vegetable juice, water, and concentrated juices of sweet potatoes and carrots. Fruit juice, water, concentrated juices of apples, pineapples, oranges, natural flavoring, citric acid, caffeine from black and green tea. Ooh, that sounds good. Vitamin C, sucralose. Aw. Rip. Uh, Pineapple juice is already so sweet. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Vitamin B12, B6, B3. It says 50% juice on the, the can as well. Vegetable juice. What do you think the most common vegetable used in vegetable juice is? What's the most garbage to your vegetable? Sweet potatoes, apparently. I think sweet potatoes are pretty good. I don't think they're cheap. Corn's probably the cheapest, right? Yeah. Corn juice. I'm really enjoying our Death of Flash mugs. Yeah, we've got new merch. If you weren't here last week, check it out at store.level1text.com. There's a lot of advertisements at the beginning of this episode. Sorry. Oh, that's delightful. I wouldn't say that this is orange pineapple. It's more like apple orange pineapple. Was apple juice one of the ingredients? No. But it tastes, I thought it was. It tastes a lot like apple juice. Almost always there's apple in like any kind of juice. Water, Pear. vegetable juice, water and concentrated juices of sweet potatoes and carrots, fruit juice, water and concentrated fruit juices juice. of apples, mm. apples oranges, yeah. and pineapples. Okay, so if it's in that order, I was correct. I didn't even realize that when I read the ingredients. So mostly apple juice, but that's not on the can. Well, mostly sweet potato juice, but apparently sweet potatoes taste like anything. Sweet potatoes are delicious as a breakfast yeah, this, item. This is very satisfying. Is it carbonated? No, it is not carbonated at all. It's just juice. I used to drink a lot of pineapple juice when I was in college, and I eventually had to stop because it was just too much sugar. This is 50 calories, which seems like a lot for... Eight, What's the serving size, though? Eight ounces. Is that an eight-ounce can? No, this, well, this is an eight-ounce... I mean, the serving size is eight ounces, and the can is eight ounces, but our cup is much larger than eight ounces. It's probably like okay. 16, yeah. 50 calories for that can? I guess it's not too bad. It's pretty good. It's certainly not water. I could, I could take it iced so it would be even more watered down than it is because it's almost too sweet. I like how they say 50% juice on the can. And when you look at the can, you would think, oh, it's 50% pineapple and orange juice. No. But no. <laughs> no, there's other stuff in there. It's like America, 50% not plutocracy. I was ter- I, like devastated when I found out that the cranberry juice I've been drinking is like 40% pear juice. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true of a lot of juices because it's too expensive to do, uh, to do right, pure. Yeah, give it a letter grade. Uh, this, is, this is an A. This is very, it's, it would be very thirst quenching, very satisfying. Uh, a little slightly too sugary, so maybe an A minus. But uh, this is a very, this is a surprisingly satisfying drink having had the tomato juice of E8 and being thoroughly unsatisfied. Also, you're going to be ripped on caffeine in a few minutes. Oh, that's going to be good. That's going to be good for the news. As much as coffee and stuff as you drink, you've got, there's no way that's affecting you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy the caffeine. I try to I only drink you, coffee in the morning. I don't drink it in the afternoon. I bet you don't enjoy it at this point. I bet it just keeps you well. Uh, that's probably true. Yeah, you're not getting high anymore. <laughs> you're just staying straight. Functioning. Yeah. <laughs> 
But maybe this story could replace some of those lost endorphins that you're no longer getting from your caffeine because this seems like, again, on the surface, seems like good news. Now, I will say not enough concrete details for me here. Yeah. They really didn't give us exactly what they're going to do. It's just like some sort of cloudy, yeah, we're going to get on that. FTC formally adopts Right to Repair platform. The Federal Trade Commission officially published a policy paper outlining how it plans to tackle Right to Repair. This was also unanimous. They unanimously approved this, which is perhaps a good sign. But the the transcripts of this meeting or like the insight into like the particulars of this meeting seemed like it was very informal. It was it was like what now? It's like people want to have the legal right to take apart their stuff and fix it. And it was like they don't already have the right to do that. But it's like, well, no, copyright and some of these other laws have eroded people's ability to do what seems like a common sense thing to do. And so they were like unanimously, okay, that sounds really good. But uh, a lot of lobbying dollars are being spent to the extent that there's probably a low hum of the dollar spending machine that you're hearing right now, you know, populating Washington with lots and lots of lobbying dollars. Did we you just try to explain away the hum? <laughs> yeah, we just spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out why there's a hum on one of the mics and... We've tried to fix it, but I think it's still low key there. We're going to try to digitally alter it. Hopefully, you guys aren't hearing Depending it. Depending right on uh, Autumn's skill level, or no, yeah. Autumn won't do this. We'll no, see. no. Grant's Grant skill level. Yeah. We'll see if you hear the hum. <laughs> it's uh, the Havana syndrome at the level one location. <laughs> we'll have more on that in a minute. <laughs> we'll also have more. I think it's in the business section where I fix it, actually. Because when they talk, you mentioned how these guys were kind of like, what? People, but don't they already have the ability to do this? I fix it did a great job of illustrating why just giving you the right to do it is not enough because they can counteract everything. Yeah. yeah. Being they being the uh, manufacturers. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. In the meantime, Joe Biden, who last week, if you remember, uh, kind of spearheaded this whole right to repair thing. He's like what? You can't repair tractors? He came down with that fiat diktat. It was like, yes, we must have it. And he has been doing a lot of big moves that are anti-big tech. Right to repair is definitely one of them. This one is probably even bigger. Biden names tech, uh, jo- tech foe Jonathan Cantor as DOJ antitrust chief. And so this isn't the first time that this individual has gone toe-to-toe with big giants. He actually comes from a law firm that's fought the big tech firms. And, you know... I just want to take a second to say that, like, the language that we're using, like, anti-big technology, anti-whatever. Tech foe. I think that there's kind of a negative connotation there that really shouldn't be because the behavior that we're seeing in things like, you know, can I repair my laptop is really insidious. It's, it is odious. So I don't, we, we don't need to describe it. It's like, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're going in a Luddite direction with anti-technology. And it's like, no. Yeah, well, reasonable things. I think if you get right down to it, those companies are also anti-tech by the <laughs> yeah. traditional definition yeah. of it. Yeah. But we know them as big tech. Yeah. The fangs. That's who they are. And uh, Biden also, you know, I, so far, his presidency has not been the disaster that some people predicted it has. But his public speaking certainly has. Yeah, he's not good at it. He's, I think there's just some dementia going on, and he's constantly having to walk him back. Uh, CNBC has the headline that Facebook isn't killing people. You know, Biden sort of walks back the attack over uh, vaccine lies. So we reported on this last week, and you know, some reporter caught him as he was walking to the helicopter or whatever. He was like, "What do you think about all the lies on Facebook?" And he's like, "They're killing people when they don't take it down." And so he's like, "Well." It's the people on the platform. It's not the platform. The platform's actually trying to, you know, do the right thing, I guess. I don't know that they are. Yeah, I don't think they actually care that much <laughs> as long as people are using the platform. Well, I think they care because of those kinds of statements. But the platform, I mean, the platform at this point, doesn't it basically have a mind of its own? It's like we built a wheat thresher that hungers for the blood of young children. And it's like, oh, crap, we, we didn't mean to build a wheat thresher that hungers for the blood of young children. Yeah, we're going to put a stop to that. It's like, well, the, the wheat thresher's still operating. And it's like, well, we have to be in business. It's like, but doesn't it demand the blood of young children in order to survive? And it's like, yes. Yes, it does. It's like, where is it getting its fuel then? Because the, <laughs> al- the algorithm <laughs> demands a blood sacrifice. So how, you know. But like, there's also those emails from Zuckerberg that we dug <laughs> up that said, how to cull children. <laughs> 
so you know it's kind of a survival thing it's like they might want to do the right thing but then they would cease to exist ah government <laughs> So speaking of government, uh, we have this little island that we have had a, a past relationship with that is fraught with drama. And it seems like that is not going to change because now things are getting a little crazy down there. The people are a little riled up. So what do you do? Well, you turn off the internet, obviously. They've already done that. That's number one in the playbook. But now they're down to number like eight or nine. <laughs> The FCC is investigating whether the Cuban government is jamming a human, uh, ham radio or not. And the answer is yes. Wow. It's definitely jamming ham radio. Some old school technology. Old school technology news this week. Being used by the, um, what's the word that describes the people who've moved away from the country? Diaspora. Being used by the diaspora of Cuba who are living in places like Miami to communicate with their loved ones because they're so close they can easily do that yeah they had somebody in the article is like i've been in regular communication every week you know for years and they've gone dark which is troubling and that guy was uh, a bit of an expert in the you know the ham band and he was pointing out he's like hey, you know he had a visualizer and he's like look this is the interference right here here's last monday that wasn't there he mm. was recording it you know you need those people sometimes I'm yes. sure it's really annoying, but sometimes we need those people. <laughs> Pretty sure that if the, the apocalypse happens, we're going to be saved by the ham radio people. So There's a ham club here in our town. Did you know that? Yeah. They meet at the park sometimes. Yeah. What, uh, what bawd modem connection do you think we could get over ham radio? I did the packet radio thing way back in the day, and it was very not fast. We would be back to the... It wouldn't be the internet. It would be back to the days of gopher. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something. I mean, in the, in the absence of infrastructure, having a text-only Wikipedia, that's something. Imagine you're chatting up a girl on the ham band. You need to get a picture of her, so you start it, and then the next morning you can see the picture. <laughs> well, I know that you use the uh, Surface Book, and you have gone ahead and added the face unlock. Yep. Which I find to be terrifying. Yeah. But it, uh, it seems to, I mean, it's convenient, obviously. Yeah. Especially if you're unlocking a lot, and on tablets you are. But have you thought about this scenario? <laughs> Judge forces U.S. Capitol rioter to unlock laptop seized by the FBI. The headline is a little sensationalist. It was face unlock, and the, they just hauled him before the laptop in court in order to unlock it because they're pretty sure that there's a recording a video recording of this person storming the capitol or whatever on the laptop because they got a warrant for it because he was wearing this camera yeah. and they assumed that that had to be storing to the laptop and if it was then that would be a full record of the day so we'll see get some hot video some live leak video off of those cameras what if one of those cameras shows one of the <laughs> uh the, the more squirrely politicians inviting that person into the capitol didn't we already have video of that? I don't think it was. Wasn't it supposed to be the security that did that, not the politicians? No, there were politicians that were giving tours to the, the people. Like the that, day before, the day yeah. The before that were like, now be sure not to storm this room because I was like, wait. So wait, and what? so works in here, yeah. I don't know. Mm, well, Section 230. The Republicans hate Section 230. I suppose it was spearheaded by Trump because you know, he was so angry that he couldn't make them do what he wanted. A lot of other people have jumped on that bandwagon. So it is almost universally understood. Democrats love 230. Republicans hate 230. But wait, it might not be a, a partisan issue. It might be completely self-serving. TechCrunch reports that the Democratic, there's a Democratic bill that would suspend Section 230 protections when social networks boost anti-vax conspiracies. Okay. But again, it hungers for the blood of children. <laughs> it's not choosing pro or anti, you know, whatever. It's choosing the thing that... People the, are engaging with. Yeah, it's, again, the blood of children problem. But, you know, I mean, they are saying that it has a very narrow scope and it will only be used in these exact situations. <laughs> Until But the it's wording not. of it, yeah. <laughs> And for some reason, they don't understand, or, the, or well, maybe they do understand and they don't care, and this has been the goal all along. But, like, you know the other team is going to use it right. as yeah. soon as it exists. Do you, would, would, we, would we as a group, just something to ponder and engage, like, would, would we as a group be okay with outlawing algorithmic boosting or suppression of content? I don't think it does enough, because you can still put people in there. Oh, yeah, that's true. 
to like and, to choose the winners. And when it happens, that's even more terrifying. And somebody calls them on it, and they'd be like, "No, that was Fred. Fred did that." And Fred's job is to say, "Like, <laughs> well, yes, I did that." Well, Fred is going to prison. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we paid him a lot. We paid his family a lot. There probably would be people that would do that. It's like, yeah, I'll totally volunteer to go to jail for 10 years if you'll take care of my family and my kids. That was in a TV show. I think maybe it was The Wire where they did that. And one guy admitted to like 40 murders. I was like, yeah, I did that. Yep. Those are all me. <laughs> That's me murdering people up and down the streets. <laughs> I don't know. And, and he knew the details because the people that really killed him gave him the details. before. <laughs> well, the nuclear football... That is, if you're an international viewer, that's probably really confusing for you. Because, no, we don't kick the nuclear football. It's 46 pounds. We carry it like an American football. But that's where the nuclear codes are. And uh, if it ever goes down with, you know, Russia or, <laughs> or Cuba, like it almost did that one time, or China or North Korea or whoever. Literally the, the, anyone. The article said it also had really important papers for state in there. And I was just having fun imagining, like, what could that be? It's, probably, it's like, oh, it's probably nudes of Kim Jong. That's one. I think it's the uh, succession. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because you have to determine who now makes the decision. Uh, but there has always been some question, how secure is it? And the answer maybe is not great. Depending on a watchdog to review nuclear football safety procedures after the January 6th incident, this points out how, you know, uh, randos came within 100 feet of the nuclear football, which they wouldn't have been able to launch nuclear weapons. There's at least protections enough in place for that. However, the aforementioned, you know, Kim Jong nudes or other important secrets, paperwork yeah. Yeah, was in the, in the briefcase, which definitely could be sold to intelligence agents. Oh, you so. could sell uh, the football, too. I mean, even if they can't use it right now, they can definitely get Level secrets Level one set from piece. It. It's like, uh, what's that? Oh, that's the nuclear football from... I was like, what? How? Okay, well, maybe you're not. Here's a good qu Here's a marketing question, right? Do you love or hate the fact that your bag, your brand bag, is the football? <laughs> You probably love it, right? Because it's like, look how secure our bags are. Yeah, but it could be also you're destroying a continent. Yeah, it's like the the uh, the. But ad, that's a small chance, right? Like, the ad uh -huh. for Targus in twenty one fifty is we j destroyed the South China Sea. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's raising a continent or raising your children, <laughs> Samsonite. <laughs> And the, uh, the Cuban situation well, is... Well, it's not really Cuba. This is in Italy. But it is called the Havana Syndrome yeah, because it true. started in Cuba. So we had those mystery diplomats who got a little bit sick. A lot sick. Brain, brain damage. The mystery case. hum. And when they looked at their brains, it was brain damage without the damage. There was no like event that they could find. There was no fractures or stress on the skull or the skin or anything. It's just inside the brain. How did they do it? Well, we still don't know. CIA director says he is escalating efforts to solve the Havana Syndrome mystery. Um, they've doubled the team size, tripled the team size. There's a lot of medical doctors on it. Best guess right now is it's some kind of microwave signal. Uh, it's probably spies. It's probably not something else. But we don't know. Yeah, they haven't set aside that it might be a directed attack. And one of the big theories is it's one of those microwave guns. But we might get some new clues... Because it started again, but not in the same place. Yeah, it's uh, Vienna is the new Havana syndrome hotspot. Roughly two dozen people and possible new cases have been reported by U.S. spies and diplomats in the Austrian capital uh, more than any other city, city except Havana itself. Mm. That's bizarre. Dark times. This, <laughs> if we figure out that a nation state's responsible for this, but Germany or Austria? Yeah. Yeah, weird. Austria is our ally, supposedly. What if it's some sort of natural phenomena that like no one realized was happening? I was well, thinking that. It's like, what if it's like cosmic rays? Or yeah. Something? What does Cuba and Austria have in common geographically that would? Maybe that's just the places it's been detected first, but maybe it happens everywhere. Is it happening anywhere there aren't U.S. spies? <laughs> that's a big indicator. <laughs> Are there any places that don't have U.S. spies? Let's be uh, honest. That's an excellent point. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe North Korea. How many spies do you think we got in North Korea? Probably uh, at least a few. It's a harrowing job, don't you yeah. think? Yeah. Well, you know what's not a harrowing job? Taking money from lobbyists because you're in the bureaucracy. 
And we've talked a lot about how much of a return on investment you get with lobbying dollars. You can spend a hundred grand and get a billion dollar contract moved your way. I mean, that is, wow, (laughs) that is big returns. And previous years, this was not this big a number. They have really stepped this up. And you can imagine if you get that rate of return, what they're getting for this. Report finds that Big Telecom spends $320,000 on lobbying every day. Telecom giants spend $234 million during the 116th Congress to ensure that U.S. broadband remains spotty, crappy, and expensive. I, you know, just watch old episodes of the Level 1 News talking about all the stuff that a Jeep Pie did. That's what that kind of money buys you. Yeah. And every, every time I don't I see that, I just think that would pay off my house and then some. I don't think he's that rich a man. Or maybe he's hiding some of it. But it's crazy how much they get for that little amount of money. Yeah. Well, $230 million is not. But I mean, individually, to, oh, to yeah. each politician. Yeah. yeah. Each politician does not get a huge chunk of that. Yeah. And a lot of that isn't just like handing people envelopes, a lot of that is all the, you know, machinery around it. You got to get them in a room. You got to pay for their dinner. You got to take them to some beautiful hotel somewhere. Probably some prostitutes getting hired. <laughs> Sometimes it's not even like the politician gets money. It's, hey, we're going to loan you a car and take you to a restaurant. And like Jeeves is going to pick you up and do everything that you need for a week. And it's like, well, that costs money. It's the Ask Jeeves. Yeah. It's that guy. Who's, he's very old now. The but animated butler. <laughs> Uh, it's sad. And what can we do? How can we free ourselves from these horrible ISPs? They've got our government all tied up. They're in control of everything. How do we stop them? Maybe this is the answer. Virginia is going to use $700 million uh, in a grant, federal grant, to roll out statewide broadband. It's assessing the funding from the American Rescue Plan, the, the aptly named American Rescue Plan. Virginia got screwed hard by the incumbent ISPs. They took a lot of tax dollars, and there's no infrastructure to speak of. How little infrastructure is there? Well, there's so little infrastructure, it makes sense for billionaires to launch enormous constellations of satellites to provide internet access. That's how insane we are. So they claim they're going to run all new stuff with that uh, $700 million, and uh, we've heard those promises in the past, haven't we? Although this is not... The same group of people making the promises. Yeah. So maybe. Maybe it'll be better. Hopefully it's better. I fully expect the incumbent broadband providers to file a lawsuit to say that this is anti-competitive. But the reason, like the way that they're getting around that mechanically is that this is fiber optic service and the state correctly realizes that it is for all intents and purposes an infinite amount of bandwidth when you run the fiber optic cables because you just change the electronics, you put it either end. So... The incumbent ISPs are more than welcome to use that infrastructure for their service. Their service can only improve. They should charge them for that server, and that should go back into the, <laughs> into the coffers. The thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it actually cost us $1,000 to wire up the town of whatever. You're going to have to pay that over the course of a year or five years or whatever. I'd be fine with that. Like a toll road. But, of course, if we did that, they would charge us for the toll, yeah. not yeah. the ISPs for the toll. And then the ISPs would give us a service charge just because they can. It's like, aren't we both paying for the toll? (laughs) And and the toll road would never actually go away. Though I think like the Bluegrass Parkway, it used to be a toll road, right? Mountain Parkway was as well. Yeah. We have a lot of parkways that used to be tolls. But I think in a lot of other states, that's not the case. Like they put that toll road up and it never goes away. Yeah. Well, I think they do creative accounting like Hollywood. Yeah. They make sure it's never paid off, which is, you know. Should probably be the death sentence. But <laughs> the ISPs would probably do the exact same thing. I think they would do way worse. Yeah. yeah. There would be a team that was just tasked with figuring out how to make that worse. And you know, uh, another big company that people really don't love, except Krista. <laughs> even, <laughs> Overwatch. even when they were destroying Hong Kong, she supported them. And, and it was wrong. It was wrong what she did. California sues gaming giant Activision Blizzard over unequal pay and sexual harassment. The NPR headline here is really tame when you read into yes. this. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <laughs> gosh. So this was the uh, during the big Me Too era. And I'm surprised we haven't heard about it till now. They drove one of the female developers to suicide, apparently. That's one of the allegations in the lawsuit, yeah. which is just utterly bananas. But yeah, when, the more details that emerge as you read that lawsuit, it's just like, ugh. It seems really 
unbelievable. But then you think about everything else that Activision has done in the past. Yeah. And you think, well, no, yeah, I believe this. Well, and, and Riot Games had the same problem. Like, it seems like it's just rampant everywhere, which is horrific. I can totally see that. Because, you know, video game programming is high skill. It is a difficult thing to do to make them, especially these AAA games. High skill and high stress. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's going to be largely dominated by males. And they are probably not going to have a lot of experience working with females. One of the things they also talked about was like, they would, what was the word for it? It was basically like the holy sunny gag where they talk about like night crawlers, but they would do that under women's desks. And they would like crawl under and like grope them and stuff. You're talking about, the uh, what is it, they want to play the worm game or, or play night crawlers? Night crawlers, yeah. yeah. But, it's, but it was happening in an office environment. What the fuck are you doing, Blizzard? Yeah. How did that get condoned by anybody? I'm uh, I'm currently watching uh, Mad Men, and I couldn't help but... Yeah, I, was like, I mean, oh, it hasn't wait. changed. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. And it hasn't changed. There's never been a more better time in history to be an independent, the whole work from home, collective group together. You don't need to work for the AAA studios. Yeah. Make an indie roguelike. <laughs> I was just thinking that. That's, that's pretty much all we've been obsessed with if you watch us on uh, Twitch. Luck be a landlord. I saw you playing that the other night. They take out everything else and it's just, okay, Here, it's just RNG and try to get synergy. It's crack. It's pure <laughs> crack. Just every turn, just click this button and we will give you endorphins and you make choices. I, I, was, I was listening to, I was playing a different game, but I was listening to your stream in the background. And I would hear like, oh, I can't get that cat. That cat's garbage. And I didn't know like any of the context of what was happening. One guy popped in while I was streaming and he was like, who the hell are you? And how do you have 54 viewers in this game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. He was like, no one plays this. <laughs> and I, so I checked the listing and I think like the next highest stream was like three viewers. <laughs> yeah, was... uh, but it's fun. I like it. Uh, swatting. Uh, we've not seen quite as many swatting stories. Do you think that's because there's less swatting stories or they just don't care anymore? I think they just don't care anymore. But, uh, you know, we certainly had the one where the guy got killed and that big story. I wonder if, how long, how many years did they give that kid? Do you think he's out yet? That would be disgusting. Uh, it was like 10 or 15 years. Oh, wow. Okay, that's good. But here's one that is uh, at least as bad, I would say. And this was a five years and that's nonsense. Yeah. Five years? An 18-year-old Tennessee man who helped set in motion a fraudulent distress call that led to the death of a 60-year-old grandfather in 2020 it was sentenced to 60 months in prison today. So at first I thought this was maybe a little harsh, but then I read like what, what he actually did, and it was like, mm, okay, maybe not. Because the, the police didn't shoot him or anything, but they were wanting him to come outside and come through his fence, but he just he was fiddling with like the fence latch, and I guess the police were getting impatient. And so, like, they were doing the police thing, and he had a heart attack, and they took him to the hospital, and he died. Which is weird, because when SWAT teams show up, they're always so considerate and of polite. The people. Yeah. 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 They well, don't shove a gun in your face I, and scream at you. I haven't seen, like, 20 different YouTube videos of people just getting shot for moving their hand an inch. Yeah. So I don't know why I'd be so concerned. <laughs> These guys were looking for Twitter and Instagram Usernames that they thought were valuable. So, like, they point out one woman was just a very early Instagram adopter and she got a two letter name. Yeah. And these guys were like, I want that. If you don't give it to me, I'm going to dox you. And she was like, I'm not doing that. Well, guess what? It just kept escalating till they get to the swatting. Yeah. And well, that's what happened with this guy, too. This guy was actually a programmer uh, who was retired. He actually had done a few things noteworthy. And yeah. he had a, a really at Tennessee. He had yeah. at Tennessee on Twitter. Wow. Yeah. I bet the government of Tennessee was real pissed when they saw that. Uh, well, you think they're trying to get it? <laughs> they're like, oh, we want that account. How long do we need to wait before this doesn't look bad? <laughs> Bitcoin. Uh, it is, when it began, it was touted as being untraceable. We have learned that that is not true. In fact, it is infinitely traceable if you give the people enough time. <laughs> But the EU wants more. Uh, EU plans to make Bitcoin transfers more traceable by using rule of law. Now, I read the, this article, but I, I, I must admit I had trouble concentrating because there was a voice in the back of my head that was screaming like, what about HSBC? What about HSBC? Because, you know, you'd think that the big banks would, you know, 
not be laundering money for drug cartels, but that's not actually the case in the EU. Well, they don't want the competition, yeah. obviously. So yeah, they're saying that if you have an exchange that hosts wallets and you're not doing your own wallet at home, your own hardware wallet, then every transaction has to record the recipient and their address and the sender and their address, who they actually are. So like Coinbase and PayPal, when they handle crypto, they have to know who you are, which is kind of like regular bank transactions in excess of $10,000, again, unless you're a drug cartel. Fine print. <laughs> also, I had to explain Bitcoin to my mom yesterday, which was Did, weird. Do you feel like you came away from that with her understanding it? Not really, because she was like, well, who? She's like, it's just fake currency. Like, it's probably not worth that much. And then I pulled up the current value, which was like 34,000 USD. And she was like, what? And then she was like, do you have Bitcoin? I was like, God, I wish. But no, I don't have any Bitcoin. I tried to explain NFTs to my parents one time. And there was just like a small, uncomfortable silence. And they changed the subject. <laughs> They're like, I don't. Yeah, we're not interested in that. This one, oh, we need a little bit of background here because we had, uh, we've had we not yet talked about the big NSO stuff yet, right? Right, we haven't. They've so, come up before on this program, but there's some, there's some security news. And uh, this is a little bit of fallout from that. We'll get to this first because this is the government section. Just, this is from the NSO thing. Uh, France, is, uh, um, France is investigating reports that Morocco had uh, President Macron's phone hacked. So... When you're getting reports that Morocco, plucky little Morocco, can have the president of France's phone hacked, uh, we've gone beyond the pale. You know what's beautiful about this is, uh, and again, we'll talk more about this later, but when they pushed NSO on this thing, they were like, look, we only sell to nation states, and, they, and only if the targets they tell us they're going to go after are terrorists and criminals. So we can extrapolate. Macron <laughs> must be a terrorist and or a criminal. At least in Morocco. Turns out he just did some stuff politically that the Moroccan leaders might not care for. Mm. And they wanted some more details on that. Yeah. But that kind of thing would never happen, right? We don't live in a world where that kind of stuff is going to go on. And another thing that I've been assured no less than a thousand times in the last two years <laughs> would never happen are vaccine passports. Guardian reports that Italy is imposing green pass restrictions on unvaccinated people. The government seeks to drive up vaccination rate amid resurgence in uh, things. And uh, yeah, it's like, let's have this on your passport, kind of, but not really. So you want to go to a bar, restaurant, uh, venue for like a concert or a sporting event or something like that. And what else? There's a couple other things. Basically anything where you're out in public, sounds like. The article implies that it's going to happen for mass transit too, but that stopped short of that. Wouldn't surprise me. You have to have this. Now there is a paper version and it's not necessarily just the vaccine. You can also prove that you've been recently tested or recently contracted it and got over it for now. But we'll see. I mean, in terms of slippery slope, I, anybody that argues that that's not what this is at this point, I, you can't take them seriously. It's something new every week. Well, there's been a lot of hacking, and uh, specifically the Microsoft Exchange hack was definitely one of the big ones, although we've already moved past it in terms of the hacking timeline. That's how many <laughs> hacks are going back and forth here. And everybody kind of had an idea of where it came from, but now we have an official accusation. The White House formally blames China's Ministry of State uh, Security for the Microsoft Exchange hack. So I, I want to say, I was trying to go back and look at it. I was uh, thinking that all the articles at the time were pointing Russia. toward Russia. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, this looks like a Russian thing. It's like, oh, there's some remnants of Russia. And it's like, no, this is China. Yeah, they found some code, I think, with the Russian what they claimed was the smoking gun. Yeah. So. I don't think they would ever report that without having hard facts, though. That's so, probably true. Yeah. Must have been both of them, right? It's almost like they both hate us. China immediately replied and said, no, not us, you. Which is probably also true. <laughs> Once again, the Spider-Man meme yeah, of diplomacy. Yeah. We, will, uh, we will talk more about that in the security section. But yeah, we've got an article about uh, China's formal response to that, which was, no, this is you. You did this. And China uh, is definitely heating up their anti-U.S. dogma 
and they're putting some weight behind it. They are tired of their big tech companies having any involvement with the U.S. China weighs unprecedented penalty for Didi after a U.S. IPO. So Didi is the ride-hailing, ride-sharing service that's popular in some places in the world. And they went ahead with the U.S. IPO because things were getting kind of weird in China. It actually went kind of okay for them, all things considered. But uh, China is going to really crack down on them. They're, they're going to probably uh, install new leadership in the company. So China has this weird thing where it's like, you're not technically allowed to list in the U.S., but everybody does it. And Didi apparently went to the regulators and they were like, yep, we're going to do this. And the regulators were like, well, we're not saying no, but we have some serious concerns about this, this, and this. And a lot of it had to do with the data aggregation, keeping it in the country and stuff like that. And when a communist regime tells you we're not sure. That means no. That means if you do this, we will kill you. <laughs> And they did it anyway. It's like when you ask your mom if you can go to a sleepover. And she's like, oh, I'm not sure. That means yeah. no. Ask your father. <laughs> so uh, we don't know yet what will happen to DD, but we are pretty sure it's going to be catastrophic. Yeah. I wouldn't invest. China has also targeted some other uh, online uh, companies and platforms. And considering the state we're in, you know, in terms of socialization, this seems very disruptive. China bans off-campus tutoring and education overhaul that sets off a market route among dozens of listed edtech platforms. That is an awkward headline. Yeah, it is. Basically, if you run a tutoring center, you can't operate outside of regular hours or on the weekend. And at first I was thinking, are they saying that kids are not going to get tutoring you know, after school hours? I guess that's good for kids, but then but, you read into it and it's like, that's not exactly what's going on. But they banned them from playing video games during those times. Yeah. So, so like, like well, what do you want them to do? Just crime. crush up the party? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, a, a lot of big companies, entire business models will just be rended apart by this. There's another part of this that also suggests that like students' data was not aggregated properly, like the other article. And it's like, are they worried about student data aggregation here as well? Well, I mean, that's children, right? So... That's a valid concern. And that was one of the things about DD is they're saying, hey, this data, I, I, I bet a lot of it is like, hey, you've got this data. We need to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and that also bled over into our next story. Yeah. More companies. And this is the same thing, although these are foreign companies. And I think they're going to take an even bigger hit. Beijing calls out Amazon, ByteDance, which we'll talk specifically about in another article. NetEase uh, and more for violating users' rights in the latest crackdown. They named 145 apps and they have until July 26th to take corrective measures or face punishment, the Ministry of Information Technology said on Monday. So this is, you have to store Chinese citizens' data on Chinese servers, presumably where we can get at it, and you have to follow these rules, that rules, and the other stuff. Even ByteDance was sucked up in this. I was about to say, isn't ByteDance a Chinese company? Basically, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but TikTok... Isn't, didn't they have to move that to America to get past the Trump thing? I still kind of like a, it's still, that's still a mess. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's, it's the pretty girl that both teams are trying to get. It's like, <laughs> no, come to us. We love you. So, uh, yeah, I, Amazon responded, as you can expect, well, everybody, the way everybody responds when China does this kind of thing is like, oh, we're happy to work with China. We love them. Please let us stay. They have a huge market of consumers, yeah. please. We want access to them. <laughs> and here we have China's response to Mr. Biden. Uh, the NBC News headline is, China rejects hacking <coughs> charges and accuses U.S. of cyber spying. China is the leader in cyber war warfare research along with the United States and Russia, but Beijing denies accusations that Chinese hackers steal trade secrets and technology. This is a very weirdly worded rejection in some respects, but they basically said, no, this is not a state-sponsored thing, the exchange thing, although they might have been you know, looking for something. They didn't really, there's a couple of things where they were kind of fuzzy on the details or fuzzy on the denial. Now, on one hand, I say the response to that has to be just like it was with Russia. It's like, okay, fine. It's not state sponsored, but you better do something about it. Yeah. Or it's going to be a state problem. But I don't know if they have the balls to step to China like that. And there is the hypocrisy to consider. Yeah. There's always the hypocrisy to consider, although they never do, do they? It seems like if we want to stand up to China, we'd have to move a lot of production back to the U.S. Otherwise, we're kind of screwed. Which, oh, would, be a, which would be a good thing overall. Yeah, it would be a good thing. Yeah. 
Well, it's not all bad news out of China. They did do something really incredible. China unveils the fastest ground vehicle in the world capable of traveling over 370 miles per hour. This is a train that goes, what was it, between Hong Kong and somewhere? Uh, it's Beijing and somewhere else. Beijing and Shenzhen, maybe? No, right. Beijing to Shanghai. There you go, yeah. There we go, yeah. Two and a half hours. Wow. That's pretty quick. Three hundred Now, at 370 miles per hour, I assume there is uh, a t- like an air brake type of thing, like a positive brake that if in catastrophic failure will pop. But at 370 miles an hour, wouldn't stuff just melt when it touched? Yeah, it was probably a one-time use brake. It's like the like the saw stop. You ever see them stick a hot dog into a table saw? Uh, it's probably like that. But would that, on a bit of a bend, would that keep you from derailing at 370? Hmm. Might still die. <laughs> a lot of people might still die. So I, I don't know. It's probably safer overall, though. Definitely incredible. We're building some bullet trains here, but we're not going anywhere near 370. <laughs> we're getting this to like 125 yeah. miles an hour. It's so stuff. So Is that a regulation thing, or are we just? We're scared to death that it's not going to be safe. <laughs> yeah, China like... doesn't care. Or I was going to say the car industry has such a vice grip on everything here. Maybe that's like a they're lobbying against it. Mm, yeah. There's that amazing story about how Henry Ford just rebuilt Detroit to destroy mass transit. Yeah. It's so so incredible that he got away with that. And this story, I think, I put this last because I think the culmination of if you're DD or any of those other companies that are, you're sitting there and you're like, why now? Why all of a sudden? What do I need to do to get out from under this? I think this is your answer. Bloomberg reports that uh, China tech billionaires are ramping up donations as Beijing is cramp, cramp, uh, cracking down. So the article in Bloomberg here implies that the billionaires and the people that have these companies are trying to show the party that this is a force for good. It's a positive force. And so yeah, how do you do that? It's like when you have scandalous <laughs> accus- uh, you know, allegations, you start ramping up donations. You give to schools and orphans and art projects and that kind of thing. And there's... Some people have already pointed out ties between specific Communist Party members who are, you know, a big part of these crackdowns and these organizations that are getting flooded with money. So it's their pet projects in some cases. And I'm sure that there's nothing being kicked back. (laughs) No, never. To those guys. I know you're not a bad guy because you helped all my orphans. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. All my orphans. I guess it's a a good thing. We're soap opera. I don't know if overall it's good, but I'm sure there's a lot of corruption still nestled away and all of that. And when, we, when it comes to corruption, I think maybe this is the thing I'm most terrified of for the future. And that is central bank digital currencies. <laughs> because, oh boy, if you make them mad once we have this, they will just turn you off. India considering phased rollout of central bank digital currency. So remember India banned digital currency and then they started seizing things and things got weird and things are already weird in China with the thing and then other countries are running steamrollers over mining equipment. And so this is taking away any shred of uh, anonymity that you might have from fiat currency and making it all digital. And yeah, there's a lot of potential for terribleness. And fully under government control. And let's remember... This is the the Modi uh, leadership. Remember what they did with the biometric database? Yeah, that turned out very badly. Remember how well that worked? Mm. That was not secured at all. Same team. Going to be putting this one together. Great. Yeah. We've got just a touch of social media. Just a hint of social media. Two stories this week. And... uh, Again, I, I was when this first came out, I was like, oh, we should do that. And then as we learned more and more, I was like, oh, we shouldn't do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> TechCrunch reports the Clubhouse is now out of beta and open to everyone. Clubhouse, I... Uh, is anyone excited about this? They point out that they still have a lot of users, uh, but it has tapered. They got one big spike in the beginning. Remember when Musk yeah. made it popular? And then when it opened up for Android, they had another spike. But now they're just kind of, you know, simmering. Seems like you could do the same thing on Discord a little more targetedly and effectively. I don't really get the, the appeal, but... Yeah, well, we've never used it. 
So also, uh, Krista, they redesigned. They were just going to use the wave emoji, but now this is the official logo. What do you think about it? Um, it feels a little disconnected from the text. It needs to be closer. Otherwise, it's, it's fine. I'm surprised they didn't go with like a, a house of some sort. But also, how about the fact that that's a wave and this is purely audio? Yeah, that's you also strange. How much do you think it would cost to engage the Chinese uh, exchange team to uh, break in and change their logo to have one extra finger? How long do you think it would be before they noticed? <laughs> it's going to cost one massive donation to those orphans. <laughs> that would be amazing. It's like, what are we going to do? Are we going to, you know? But they could have done like a house with like headphones around it. <laughs> there's, but there's better options. I mean, it's fine, but. Yeah. Well, we've talked a lot about the YouTube algorithm and it's impressive, but at times it is terrible in hilarious ways. And repetitive. And, and requires the blood of children. And it does, uh, you know, destroy lives. It allows people to create a living and then strips that away from them arbitrarily. <laughs> so you can make that argument about it. But apparently there's an even more capricious and powerful algorithm out there now. How TikTok sees inside your brain. So you can read this and have a little bit of a reflection on, it's not that complicated how the endorphin button works in your brain and this thing exploits it. I, my understanding, I don't have TikTok, but I have a friend who does. And he said, you basically just scroll through it. Like it's right. just a constant feed. It's not like YouTube where you see like a big bunch of thumbnails. You just constantly scroll. And because of that format, the main thing that they look at is when you stop scrolling. Mm -hmm. When you stop scrolling, a timer starts. And they base what you stop to look at, that they base your feed on what you've stopped to look at. And apparently it's very good at finding more things that will stop you. So. I'm too old for TikTok. Too old. I don't know. I've never used it. Ain't nobody got that kind of attention span. I don't mind like looking at TikToks to get <laughs> reposted else somewhere. It's the opposite but. of an attention span. Yeah. Do you think someday we'll get to the point where we don't have... What is the, well, How long is the, the maximum TikTok? A minute and a half, I think. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. really short. It's like Vine. It's, it's a new version of Vine. Well, TikTok would say Vine is a version of TikTok. Well, I broke into the sparkling ice caffeine. I feel like we've seen it before. We did. We've seen this before. This is, this is again, uh, the balls in the Hanks soda came to us uh, thanks of Uber Archangel on, on Discord. So more is on the way. So we'll probably have that for next week. But uh, yeah, I'm just making my way through the through the leftovers. And uh, I really like this. This is very ref refreshing. This is good stuff. Do you think Uber Archangel drives an Uber or is it just a really big Archangel? <laughs> I, mean, I like the idea of the, the driver personally. If you really want to find out, you could message him on Discord. A 600 pound angel. Does the... <laughs> Dr. Does, Proctor. Does, does Uber do Angel, like, do they turn around and be like, Jesus is my co-pilot? And they give you, like, a thumbs up? No, they speak German. I love the death of Flash. I'm totally wearing that to the next developer thing that I go to. Oh, Chris, did show off your, uh, oh, your yeah. shirt today. I don't know if you can see it The mic's well. in front of it. Yeah, yeah, stand up a little bit there. That's, That's Rue. That's Rue Dog. My mom also very excited about the Rue Dog t-shirt. And if you hate Rue, we've also got the cat version. Which if, you're, if you're a subscriber of L1 Cats. Didn't realize we were making. Look how happy they are in that picture. Wow. Crouton's not happy in that picture. He just, I just woke him up to take That's the picture. That's why I like it. <laughs> I would, the other image I was thinking about using for your cat mug was going to be uh, the one where they're synchronized oh, licking their crotches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to tell what's going on in that picture, though. Yeah. Because the white floor... You really have to take them in. I don't know if that would translate well to a t-shirt. Yeah, I think that's why I opted against it. But anyway, we've got a bunch of new stuff in the store. If you're into that kind of thing, check it out. Check out the forum. We appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. See you tomorrow.